Hello folks, in this video I will share the results of a strategy that I've been testing. I tested it on a few different symbols and this chart here shows the result on the S&P 500. The blue line is a buy and hold of the S&P, so essentially it's the underlying index, while the green line is the system balance, which you can see outperforms the benchmark by a good amount. So I'm going to clear all of these cells and then I will go through them and explain how the backtest is set up and what the rules of the system are. So first of all, I'll bring up this very crudely drawn diagram. Uh, essentially, what it's meant to show is two, uh, well, two days worth of price data. So the idea for the strategy is I want to look at the daily range, so the low to high range of a particular day, and then I want to look at where the price closed within that range. So the idea here is that if the price closes near the low, so within the lower part of the overall candle, then I want to go long on the premise that the next day is more likely to be an up day. So that's essentially what this backtest is going to be looking at. Now I've set a threshold for how far I want this to be within the range. So I've said that as long as my close is within the lower 20% of the overall day's range, then I'm looking for an entry and to hold the price for the next day. So that's the rule of it. It's, it's quite a straightforward strategy. There's not really too much more to it. So this is how the backtest is set up. First of all, I import the modules that I need. So uh, as usual, it's pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, and date time. And then I define the date range. So I need quite a, well, I take quite a long date, uh, time frame for this. So I've gone from the start of 2000 to the end of 2020, which gives me a good amount of uh, data for the sample. And then I define my starting variables. So the starting balance is just something to track for the system. And this PCT thresh here is that 20% threshold that I was referring to. So this is what I'm going to be using to check whether or not I have a trade. Next, I download data. So for now, I'm just downloading the S&P 500. And this gives me all the information, including volume and adjusted close. Now, I don't need these last two columns for this, so I can drop them off. And I'm just left with my high, low, open and close. Uh, I like to plot the price out just to make sure that it's looking correct and as I would expect it to, and this is looking like the S&P 500. So all of that's working fine. Next, I need to know some of the benchmark uh, metrics. So first of all, I want to know how much day-to-day -day this is returning. So I just take today's close divided by yesterday's close. That tells me how much has changed every day since the start to the end of the sample. And then I can use that together with that starting balance of 10,000 to work out how much the balance would be every single day. So if you bought on day one, what would you have on the last day? And that's showing here that it grows to 25,811. So that gives me the increase. I also want to calculate the drawdown. So I work out the peak balance, and then I track the current balance against that peak to work out how much it's fallen. So I can then take the worst case, which is, shit, is coming up as 56.78%. So that's saying that at worst, the drawdown has been just over half of the portfolio. So a pretty significant drawdown. Now that the basic benchmark metrics are, are done, what I can start looking at is the strategy itself. So like I said, I needed to know, first of all, the overall range for the day. So I needed my high minus the low. I also needed to know what the distance was from the close price to the low. And then when I have those two, so that's my overall range, high to low, and then I have this range, close to low, I can divide this one by the overall one, and that gives me, up as a percentage, how far this is uh, within that range. So that's essentially what's happening here. If I run this, it gives me an additional three columns. So this is my daily range between my uh, high and low, so 14.5. The distance is the close to that low, and then the percentage is showing essentially how close that is as an overall percentage of the daily range. So you can see it's tracking that percentage through each day. And what I want to be looking at is the days when that percentage is less than the 20 that I've set as my threshold up here. So I define 20 as my, essentially my system parameter. So anytime the close is within the lower 20%, I want to go long. So that's what this column or this cell here is doing. It's generating all of my long entries. And now that I have those, I can basically go through that entire data frame and say that on the days when I've got a long signal, which is what's happening here, so I'm, I'm using NumPy to say where yesterday had a long signal, 
then I want to take the, the return of the price and use that as my system return. On the other days, I am not in the market, therefore my return is just one. It's not up or it's not down. So in the same way as I calculated the balance for the benchmark, I can do the same thing for the system, but now I use the system returns rather than the benchmark returns. So if I run this now, you can see my benchmark balance is coming out at the very end of the system as, as 25,811, just as I had before, but the system balance is 62,091, so significantly higher. And it would be good to visualize it. So this is where I'm plotting both of the uh, balances on top of each other. So this is the chart that I showed right at the beginning of the video. And you can see the blue line there is that balance that's been calculated for the benchmark and green is what's been calculated for the system. Now, there is a bit of a spike here at the top. So there's maybe something strange going on here, but you can see just in general, it does seem to be quite a bit above the benchmark. So that's fine. I've got the upside. Now I can do the exact same calculation for the drawdown that I did for the benchmark. And you can kind of see already that it doesn't really have the same kind of dips. I mean, it does have drops uh, here and there, but it doesn't seem as severe. And it does calculate that it's just, just under 30% at worst drawdown, which compares quite well to the 56, almost 57% that the benchmark S&P had. So now just to get a, an easy comparison, I can calculate all of the metrics and put them out side by side. So the total return for the S&P 500 over those 20 years was 158%, which comes out to an annual 4.62, which is still pretty decent. Uh, the system, however, generates 9% per year. The other important thing is the drawdown, uh, like I just mentioned, is quite a bit better. It's still not great. I mean, you would still have to see 30% drawdown, but comparing to just buy and hold, it does seem to be an improvement. Another thing to note is that because this is only going to be in the market when the conditions are met, that means that there's a large time when you're not actually trading the system. So it's showing that the system is only trading for 21% of those days within that sample. So the rest of the days, the cash is free to trade other systems potentially. And that could work to increase the overall return if you spread them out uh, across a, a number of different trading strategies. And then this last section here just compares the one uh, against the loss trades to give the overall win rate of just under 60%. So far, the results are coming out pretty good. But what I wanted to do is test it on a few different symbols. So it's not just the S&P 500. So I create a list of a few different indices here. And then I create a function called backtest, which essentially is just all of the code from above. Uh, the different cells just copied into one single cell. So now when I run this back test, it's going to do all of that for me. It will calculate the, the return for the system. It's going to take one of these symbols, go through them one at a time, and just work out all of those same, the range, the distance, the long signals, uh, and all that stuff as well. And at the end of it, it's going to return the benchmark annual return and the system annual return. And this is going to allow me to compare them side by side. So I run this code just to get that function into. Uh, and now I can run the actual back test. So here I've created an empty list to be able to take my returns into. And then I run through each of the symbols within that symbols list and run a back test on it. So that's complete. And now I can plot them all out side by side as a bar chart. So you can see now, this is what I've already tested. This is the S&P 500 returns. So the benchmark in blue and a system in green. Uh, it looks like pretty much for all of the other ones that I've tested here, the results are similar. So some of them are not quite, there's not quite as much of a difference between the benchmark and the system. On others, it's a bit more pronounced. But overall, it does seem like this is something that performs slightly better than a buy and hold. In addition to that, it seems to have better drawdown, as well as the fact that you're not always in the market. Of course, there are the usual caveats that uh, trading fees haven't been included in this back test, as well as things like, uh, I'm assuming that I can always get a fill at the close prices. In reality, there's gonna be slippage and things like that to consider that could erode the returns of the system away, but it still seems like there's something there that's worth investigating further. So I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.